Tonight, NDC drops explosive secret recording on which Attorney General is heard in conversation with third accused person in ambulance trial, asking him to purportedly help him make his case. You are not privy to this hey, one, I'm telling view, you. In my view, if, yeah. you, if, you, if we agree to this theory, mm -hmm. it's so simple, the theory of the case. Not but agree to, to, to the way you want to go, the way you want to go about it. So, so you let agree, you, you let describe it that way. You let describe it that way. Do you want to go about it? Speaking fine, as you are saying, if I agree to your, your your position, how you want to go about it, and how you want me to go about my answering questions and things, I'll be dishonest. I'll be assisting for someone I know is completely innocent about this. For example, to force him to be jailed. The NDC has also uh, been displaying secret whatsapp messages between your attorney general and the third accused which they say that's not back they claim that this was part of a grand scheme including a sitting supreme court judge to entrap the attorney general This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you uh, by Telecel. And indeed, it's been an explosive day of secret recordings being played. And the NDC had promised last week that indeed they were going to put out a secret recording which they believe really exposed an attempt by the Attorney General to... Uh, lead a particular witness in the in the case a, a man that you're trying a third accused in the ambulance case to give incriminating e evidence that has been falsified against a minority leader case a lot of false again today the ndc national chairman john cecilian kitia himself addressed the news conference and played that secret tape my colleague is in the studio with me Kweku Asante. I'm also joined in the studio by Kojo Brace because this matter is a very fluid developing story. The MPP is also just about addressing a news conference. There's a fair bit we learned today, including WhatsApp messages that the NDC produced today that confirmed indeed that the Attorney General initiated the conversation uh, uh, for the meetings to be had between himself and Richard Jackman, the third accused in this particular case, and had in one of the instances recommended where the meeting should take place. We've seen and heard the accusations that there may have been an ambush involved in this case where the Attorney General did not know about these meetings but had been called and a surprise was sprung on him. Uh, involving a, a sitting Supreme Court judge. Now, we'll read those WhatsApp messages uh, for you uh, so you can make up your own minds about this. But Kweku Asante just returned from that particular press conference and he joins me now. Mm. Uh, and and at, the, at the heart of this case, it's part of what you've covered in court, is the letters of credit yes. that the AG had been referring to. That some payments were made even when they, they shouldn't have been made in the in the clearing of these uh, ambulances. As it turns out today in the recording, this became a, a, a subject of a heated exchange yes. between the Attorney General and the third accused. Who is the third accused, by the way? That is Richie Jakpa. He owned Jakpa Business, the company that made a proposal to the health ministry and was accepted to supply some ambulances. And Evans, like you said, the entire case against the minority leader is built upon the execution of a letters of credit and he signed that letter authorizing the release of those letters of credit it came to light in this tape that the ndc put out today that the attorney general and richard jackpa had really difference in opinion as to how lc's worked and so in the tape that the ndc have published which we are going to play to you the ndc have put out and you can clearly see richard jackpa trying to explain to the attorney general how else is worked so that it can come to the same page. Although, in later tapes, you would hear the Attorney General ask Richard Jackpa to take another stance that he believes would have made his case for him. But listen to this. The, the financial instrument for the project is an irrevocable letter of credit. So, so that credit letter has already been sent. No problem. But, even in my view, that letter of credit area, the contract requires that you pay by it. Let's okay. It's not so. Yes. In addition, we should establish it uh -huh. upon the front of the contract. 
So already you have paid. Upon the sign of the contract for every fifty ambulance. Yes. That no. Upon the signing of the contract for every fifty ambulance, since there was no advance mobilization, advance payment, that that LC was a security that you have to establish ahead. No problem. It's not the contract for every fifty ambulance. It is the contract for the contract for every fifty ambulance. Pardon? It is it is the contract for. I'm saying upon the sign of the contract for every fifty ambulance. Yes. It is the contract for the every fifty ambulance. If the contract is for two hundred ambulances in tranches of fifty, uh -huh. fifty, fifty. Good. Hold on. So, so that contract for fifty ambulance is different from this one. No. It is the contract is one contract for two hundred ambulances, which has been broken down within the contract for every few you establish lc for every 50 tranche so you have four no, lcs for no, the no. 200 ambulances no that part here no that part here i disagree with you but if you look at the terms of contract it's quite clear and it should not be difficult for you to accept because really it doesn't put you in any any problem at all that, that does not put you into any any, any difficulty and you know the, the minister of health you know the minister of finance so for it may if you accept that no, no, see, see no, the, 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 the problem I have in accepting that for you yeah. is that, uh, accepting that uh -huh. for you for you is that in uh, their letters that confirm that both from government and from the principal that is for every that 50 works. ambulances that confirms yeah. that uh -huh. and I'll be tendering those letters in so I cannot go against what the, the letters say and the contracts say because I was the agent okay. at that time. That part business was hold the agent. On. And then the most explosive part, Kweku. Yes. It, it gets to the point where the attorney general is asking Richard Jakpa to accept his version of story. And he's, he says again, like you heard in this tape, that that will not pose any challenge to you if you make that admission in open court. And so he presses on Jakpa to accept those versions of the story. And then Jack Parker comes in and says that I cannot do that because if I do that, that will incriminate someone I know is innocent. The goose was shipped. No. The goose got no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. He couldn't have, he couldn't have. Oh, yeah. The supplier, there is no way oh, yeah. under the sun he could have cashed the LC before the shipping document, which were conditioned president, was presented to Ghana International Bank. Even when he presented the documents to Ghana International Bank, Ghana International Bank refused to honor the LC, raising issues of discrepancy, which came back to Bank of Ghana, which later went to the Ministry of Health, and then Animana authorized Bank of Ghana through Ministry of Finance to pay because they had sorted out the discrepancies with Big C. That time, around this time, all the ambulances had already arrived in Ghana. You are not privy to this one, I'm telling you. In my view, if yeah. you if you if we agree to this theory, mm -hmm. it's so simple. The theory case. Not but agree to, to the way you want to go. The way you want to go about it. So, so you let agree. You, you let describe it that way. You let describe it that way. Do I want to go about it? Okay, if you agree fine. To it this way. For me, it makes it simple. Yes, it will make it. It, it, fine. Doesn't, it doesn't also involve. It doesn't involve any difficulty for you. Yes, I agree. I understand your point. I doesn't. When you say there is no advancement, yes. Yes, when you say there's no advancement, there's no advancement uh, ordinarily meaning in Ghana uh -huh. that you, you 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 don't pay until you get your goose. Now the contract here, I mean the clear terms, unless maybe you guys did not draft the contract or it says LC is on site of goose shall be established upon the final of the contract for every future. No, it was the contract was drafted by government. It was drafted by government. And it and and it was an LG AG department Perose the contract and approve the contract for government. It, it is not a problem where they approve it. Every contract that they approve mm -hmm. before later when they implement it, then problems. You, you see, uh, what uh, the, uh, the uh, difficulty uh, I have, I have with your, uh, your your position is that you see, I if you, frankly speaking, fine as you are saying, if I agree to your, your your position, how you want to go about it and how you want me to go about my answering question sentence, if I go by that way, frankly speaking, I will be dishonest because. I know that is not how it's supposed to be. And I'll be dishonest, and I'll be dishonest in such a way that I'll be assisting for someone I know is completely innocent about this. For example, Arthur Forsen. To be jailed because I knew something was wrong, was not the way, and I decided to, to, to keep quiet and to answer the question in a way that will make your case better for you to jail him. I'll, I'll be battling with my conscience. That is the problem I'm having. Any time you bring up this, 
that is my problem I'm having. Because me, for example, I am in this case because I'm innocent and I'm going through ordeal. So I'm looking at another person also going to go through ordeal and through me because I know the truth and I decide not to say it because I want to help the AG make his case. And I ask myself, what is what is my interest in it? I'm not asking it to really help me. I'm just going by it. But anyway, so so so, so that's fine. So this one was even just by the way. I, 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 I hope you get my difficulty. So, uh, it's, 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 on, it's on the phone. I don't even know that. Oh, no, know no, no. <laughs> no, 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 You'll be, you'll be meeting oh. me or at my at my cousin's place and you've been bringing this yeah, issue up several mm, several that, times that, and i keep telling no, you that okay, i can't do that because so it doesn't, say, it, it doesn't sit well with me the terms of contract the terms of contract are simple and it's on sites that be established upon the side of the contract for every time with us yeah <clears throat> the answer yeah mm. Mm. it's for and every so when contract. you see that for every and 50 ambulance means that yes, it's not only the 50. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. For payment, every, it means that it is no, not only fifty. All right. Mean that all there right. are a lot of fifties that will be following. Uh -huh. So that is what I was trying to explain to you. So frankly speaking, okay. the LC that was established was was as a security for the supplier to invest his own. Money. Now there was also a part that we learned about an excuse duty. Mm. The AG was traveling, and I, I couldn't quite understand that. Mm. At a press conference, there was some explanation as to what was happening. The AG was traveling, and he mm. wanted Jackpot to assist him in court. Yeah. So Richard, um, Richard Jackpot has opened his case in court. And, and if you know Justice Ifia Sewa Sariboti, she likes to stick to timelines. She wants to do this. In fact, there was one day I was in court when Atofo Sin opened his court. He asked Eduji Tamaklo to do cross-examination of the finance minister in 30 minutes. And so the AG asked um, Richard Jackpot, to do the cross-examination in such a way that it will either last a longer period so that when he returns from his official trip, he can come back and meet the trip. Then the gentleman says, I'll do something of that sort. And then the AG comes in and says, oh, you can even bring an excuse duty. Then the AG says, okay. The Jackpot tells the AG, you can go ahead and bring the excuse duty. Then the AG says, no, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not going to bring the excuse duty. I'm asking you to just get some excuse duty, maybe you are sick or something, so that we can bring it in court. And then ultimately, the judge will allow that, oh, then let's expand because of today you are not here because you are sick and all that. Then Jackpot comes in and says, oh, I cannot do that. Oh, the last time I was not in court, even the judge issued an arrest warrant. I don't want to get in trouble with this judge again. And so the AG goes on and on, trying to impress on Richard Jackpa to get him to create some medical excuse, to create some medical emergency so that he will not be available at the time the, so that he, he, can, he can actually expand the, his, his, his cross-examination and evidence in chief at the point that AG would have returned from his trip and come and meet the examination. The reason why I that, that's my timetable for, for the rest of the uh, Oh, that means that you are not going to be around. So, yeah, and then even next week, the whole of next week, I'll not be around. Um, it is a way of <laughs> if you will not even finish next week, um, I would appreciate. Oh no, okay, no, no, I will not, I will, I will not finish next week. I don't think I'll be able to finish because the documents are many. So you will surely go and come and meet and meet me. Oh, no, but that will also depend upon that will also depend upon the judge's but behavior. I can bring one medical experience next week. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. Okay, fine. If you bring a medical excuse next week. I said you. <laughs> can I bring a medical excuse? Ah, no, you, you are saying that I should bring yeah. a medical excuse next, yeah, yeah. next week. You can. You can if you want. Ah, That's but true. brother, you want this woman to issue bench warrant for me again? <laughs> right. Uh, anyway. Uh, because you can see that I was really in admission struggling for my life and she issued bench warrant for me. For me to be arrested. Mm, and my no name problem. was put everywhere. That's right. Now, if I go and, uh, uh, and, and, and do another one, as you are saying, my brother, this woman who issued another bench warrant for me and destroy my, my, the, 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 the little of my reputation left. <laughs> oh. he, would, he would destroy it for right. me. <laughs> no, uh, okay. But you surely thank go and come and meet me still right. talking. So don't worry. No problem. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank All you, right. my brother. Thank you, my brother. So that's the exchange there on phone mm -hmm. between the Attorney General and Richard Jackba. I as it relates to this excuse duty mm. and the ndc's view on this is that uh the ag was asking him to fabricate a document uh, and place it before the court to 
tell the court that indeed he was not well when indeed he was uh, perfectly fine. We'll hear from the NDC pretty shortly. Now, since this broke, yes. we've also heard about a, a sitting Supreme Court judge. And the narrative from the NPP had been that the Attorney General wasn't trapped, that yes. he was ambushed, mm. and that he had real... He didn't initiate this conversation yes. and that he was called into a meeting and, and this was some conspiracy between Jack Ba and the Supreme Court judge. The NDC also today produced WhatsApp messages that appear to suggest that the Attorney General initiated yes. these conversations and actually even suggested the venue. Yes, on 16 February 2022, Jack Ba sends a message to Godfrey Damien per the screenshot that have been put out. I'm humbly requesting for a time and venue at your convenience to meet you for a private discussion, please. I'm most grateful for that kind gesture from you. Hope to hear favorably from you. This is the re lawyer Jackpa writing on WhatsApp to the Attorney General. The Attorney General then responds and says that, I will arrange through your brother. Thanks. So this goes on to actually counter the point that I've been made. And, and arrange that it was, through your brother apparently refers to this... This sitting Supreme Court judge that has not really been named in all that that is going to express, except that some persons in the MPP quarters have mentioned the name, but we were unable to put that name out. So this is what... The, 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 from this WhatsApp message that Godfrey Dami sends, this is Godfrey Dami saying that I will arrange for this meeting through your brother. And so I'll do that arrangement and then get back to you. Uh, and this was based on the request, at least from on the, on the face of Jabba. that WhatsApp message. And then they also produced another WhatsApp message that also showed a separate WhatsApp call yes. that it appears to have been initiated by the, the Attorney, Attorney General. General. That for, lasted for 26 minutes. Yes, that is Tuesday, 9th April. That is just around the time that this recording that we have been able to play was recorded. And again, it was around the time that Jack Pa was opening up his case in court being cross-examined by lawyers on, on all sides. And so the Attorney General calls um, Richard Jakpa. They speak for 26 minutes from the WhatsApp call that is evidence on the screenshot that Richard Jakpa or the NDC have been able to source and have, have been able to publish. 26 minutes. The call ends. That is very early in the morning at 7, 12 a.m. Richard Jakpa and the AG has a 26 minutes call. And then at 8, 16 a.m., there's another call from Jakpa that lasts just two minutes. So on that morning, they have an almost 30 minutes call on both sides. And the NDC, NDC says they have more tapes that they can put out and that this may further this is further evidence that on that morning, the AG was trying to coach Richard Jakpa on how to answer questions and how to offer his testimony in a way that will incriminate the minority. Uh, listen to the national chairman of the NDC, John Sassoon, addressing these WhatsApp messages as it relates to the allegations of entrapment that the MPP had put out. In sharp contrast to, this, to his earlier claim that he has never met any of the accused persons, the Attorney General now claims that he has actually contacted and met the third accused, Richard Jappa, but that he met him only once at the residence of a Supreme Court judge, and that this meeting was not at his behest, but rather at the behest of a sitting Supreme Court judge who entrapped him. He now want to extend the lie to a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all these claims by the Attorney General through his spokesperson are lies, and we have evidence to prove so. In addition to the voice recordings, we have other evidence by way of screenshots of chats on WhatsApp between Godfrey Dame and Mr. Jappa, which further prove that the Attorney General contacted and represented a represented person without recourse to the represented person's lawyer. The charts further show that it was Godfrey Odame, Godfrey Dame, who chose to meet Richard Jappa at the house of the Supreme Court judge, and not the Supreme Court judge who invited them. The first one. 16 February 2022, from Richard Jappa. I'm humbly requesting for a time and venue at your convenience to meet you for a private discussion, please. Then, 
I'm most grateful for that kind gesture from you. Then hope to hear favorably from you. Nice. This is nice. all from Richard okay. Japa. Then you, you come down here. Okay. That is from Godfrey Dame. I will arrange through your brother. Thanks. That brother is the Supreme Court judge. So Godfrey Dami says he will arrange through the Supreme Court judge for them to meet. So the Supreme Court judge has not requested for any meeting in his house. It's Godfrey Dami who arranged the meeting. Then he said, okay, the charts show it was Godfrey Dami who chose to meet Richard Jaffa at the house of the Supreme Court judge. As you can see from, the, from this screen, this is a WhatsApp chat dated 16 February 2022, in which Godfrey Dami undertakes to arrange a meeting with Mr. Jaffa through his brother, actually his cousin, the Supreme Court judge, through a WhatsApp message sent at 7.32 p.m. This evidence totally belies Dame's contrived and ridiculous claim that he was entrapped. So he was not entrapped. He planned to use the Supreme Court judge to call the witness for whatever they wanted to set up. Well, joining me in the studio now is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. Uh, shortly, I'll be taking you uh, to the uh, MPP's own press conference. It's been addressed by the Director of Legal, uh, Frank Davis. I'll bring that to you live if you want to stay with us for that. Also joining me, Professor uh, Kujia Pijitia. He's Associate Professor at School of Law, University of Ghana. But uh, it's to you, uh, Sami, that I, I tend to next on this matter. Uh, you today have put out the evidence that you believe you have, the secret recording, the WhatsApp messages. So what do you want now? demanding the immediate and unconditional resignation or dismissal of Godfrey Yabuadame from his current position as Attorney General and Minister of Justice. And that is because he has proven to be unfit for that high and hallowed office. He lacks the integrity and the character that such an important office requires. Um, you know that the entire prosecutorial powers of the state is vested in one person, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice under Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution. And that is why the occupant of that office must be a person of integrity, a person who adheres to the ethics of the legal profession and who respects the right of accused persons to be presumed innocent or proving guilty. Godfrey Dame per the evidence we have put out is a scheming, devious character who goes about manipulating the judicial process to secure wrongful convictions at all costs. And this person cannot be our attorney general. So his immediate and unconditional resignation or dismissal is what we are asking for. And should the president refuse to do so, we are calling on parliament to launch a publicly televised inquiry into this process, uh, into these matters, with a view of censuring the attorney general because if the president will not remove him parliament has powers under the constitution to censure and remove him from office and we want that probe to be televised so that everyone can see and know the truth for themselves number three we are also calling for disciplinary proceedings to be instituted by the general legal council against Godfrey Abu Adami because these are issues that obviously should come to the attention and if they require a petition to trigger that we are ready to do that to ensure that he goes through the same disciplinary proceedings that lawyers who breach the professional um, um, um ethics you know that governs the legal profession because clearly he has engaged in communication with a represented party on the blind side of his lawyer that breaches rule 13. but they've made the point that at the time these conversations happened he wasn't represented. Well, you have seen incontrovertible evidence to the contrary that the AG first engaged this third accused person on the 16th of February 2022. Yes, at the time, 
he had just been granted bail, right? Now, by the 17th of July, 2022, that was when the AG first met him and asked him to share with him documents. We've shared with you the WhatsApp screenshots and he forwarded the documents to him. As at that time, Mr. Jackpot was represented by a lawyer, Corsa. The audio recording we have played to you was recorded on the 9th of April, 2024, just about a month ago. Uh, at, at about 7 12 a.m you can see that from the whatsapp screenshots and at the time jack power was represented by mr tadio sorry so they claim that the the ag has been speaking directly with the accused person because he was not represented as palpably false and the evidence says so aside that a lawyer is not supposed to tell a witness to lie to a court that breaches rule 54. clearly you hear godfrey dame telling a witness before the court to deceive the court by forging a fake medical excuse duty no that is conduct on becoming of a lawyer no person who has a scintilla of honor or integrity would do such a desp despicable act which by the way per section 213 and 214 of the criminal and other offenses act constitutes crime perjury what we call fabrication of evidence which is perjury mm. a second degree felony so and me. so yeah let, let, let's see if professor kujo pgtr is a associate professor school of law at the university of ghana agrees with you because he's uh, also listened in on the uh, secret record that has been played uh, prof thanks for your time your reaction having listened to the secret tape that the ndc promised as they will play last week they have played it now good evening thanks for having me um, unfortunately the recordings reveal a very bad side of the attorney general and but it's not just about the attorney general it's about the office of the attorney general which is the high office the sole office devoted to um the criminal justice system protecting the integrity of the criminal justice system so it is a law that the attorney general has recorded as a result of the release of this audio which clearly shows that he has compromised his position and it's a very bad example that has been set which is going to go into the history of um the criminal justice system in the country so it is very important that immediately he purges himself of this um behavior which is unprofessional and unethical so that some integrity can be restored immediately to that office from what you heard what is unethical about what, what we just heard He's trying to compromise the um, the, third, the, third def the defendant or accused person to tell some lies or to, to fabricate a story in such a way that it would corner and nail the first um, accused person and make him um, bad and find him for the court to find him culpable. And I think that is against the ethics of the profession. And so he should be in a better position to have known that. And it's also interesting on the tape that he sensed that what he was doing was not right. That's why he's saying, I hope I've not been recorded. So he knew what he was doing was wrong. And something has to be done about it to ensure that this is not um, continued. Is it only a case of an ethical breach, or as the NDC has suggested, a crime may also have been committed there? A, a crime is also committed. Yes, perjury. Perjury, the truth is trying to. Um, for somebody to compromise the truth, and that certainly is perjury. It didn't only end there with regard to um, the, the the issue of um, fabricating the story, but also even asking the third defendant to um, forge some papers to send to the court, uh, as to he, so that he will not be available to come to court on a particular day. That is also wrong. It's, it's certainly wrong. It's in bad taste. Uh, you, the, so what happens now? What's the remedy? Uh, just for the matter to be picked up by the General Legal Council, the NDC says the, uh, the Parliament should also look into it. What's your own suggestion on this matter as to how, you, how you proceed? I think the most honourable thing is for the Attorney General to resign and to uh, make a, a public apology to Daniel that what he did was wrong. He has realised it's wrong and he's apologising. If that doesn't come forth, the president should dismiss him from the office, should leave him of his position, so that the integrity of that office can be preserved. At least that image, the tainted so image... So you want to ask me about that? Corrected in some way or the other. Sorry.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please proceed. So, yeah. So, and if the president doesn't go forward to releasing of his position, then there are other steps. Parliament, for example, can come in and institute a probe into this whole matter. Um, a commission of inquiry can also be established. Um, Shash, the matter can even be reported to Shash. So these avenues are available, which certainly need to be pursued in case these first two steps that are suggested are not complied with from the AG himself or from the president. And Prof, thank you very much. That's Professor Kujo Pidyechi, Associate Professor, School of Law, uh, University of Ghana, expressing his thoughts on the secret recording that has just been put out by the NDC. Now, uh, just as we've been speaking, the MPP press conference just got underway. Uh, addressing that press conference is the Director of Legal for the Party, MFA Power, is here. Top headlines coming from there. So they have a pushback accusing the party, that's the NDC, of bastardizing the judiciary and is also desperately shielding the minority leader from taking responsibility for his role in course and financial financial loss to the state. Frank Davis is currently addressing the media. Directed the controller and accountant general to pay the sums of 806,688 Ghana CD 75 pesos representing bank charges covering the establishment of letters of credit for the supply of 50 ambulances and further directed for the amount to be charged against the capital expenditure vote for the Ministry of Health. Ladies and gentlemen, all these directives by first accused, KSL to forcing, were contrary to the agreement for the supply of the ambulances, as well as the parliamentary approval regarding the financing of the transaction. It is also important to note that Atuk forcing's authorization of payments for the transaction was, was without any request from the Ministry of Health. In fact, the Ministry of Health had specifically asked Big C to stop producing the ambulances as there was no valid contract regarding the transaction. In spite of all that, Atu Fossi, without cause, and for reasons best known to himself, proceeded to authorize payment for the ambulances. First one to the unlawful directives of first accused, Atu Fossi, Big C shipped 30 vehicles in three consignments between October 2014 and February 2015, which were fundamentally defective and lacking in the basic requirements for an ambulance. In short, they were not fit for purpose. This was confirmed by a letter written by the then Minister for Health, Dr. Alex Sebefia, and other assessments by the National Ambulance Service. In point of fact, Alex Sebefia, in the letter to Big C, Describe the ambulances as ordinary vans to wit. Trotro. Interestingly, this same himself, Alessi Bevia, was sitting with them in that press conference. These vehicles were never used and could not be used as ambulances during the whole tenor of the Joe Mahama administration. Following the change in government in 2017, Investigations commenced and statements were taken from several people, including the incumbent Speaker of Parliament, Kingsford Bagbin, Mr. Kweku Ajiman Mensa, Madam Sherry Aite Disease, and Dr. Alessi Gifia, all of whom were former health ministers, as well as first accused Kesel Forcing and other persons, including the third accused person. Richard Jakpa. Out of these many people, the Attorney General convinced that the willful act of Kesela Tufosin had resulted in the financial loss of 2,370,000 euros to the state, charged him before the High Court, together with Sylvester Animana, the former Chief Director of the Ministry of Health, and Richard Jakpa, a businessman, for causing financial loss abetment to causing financial loss and misapplying public property. The proceedings before the High Court. Ladies and gentlemen, proceedings in this matter have run its full course since commencement in December 2021. The prosecution led by the able Attorney General called five witnesses in proof of its case. Lawyers for first accused 
in an attempt to truncate the proceedings, filed a submission of no case, and urged the court to rule that KCL at had no case to answer, as no premier fasci case had been made against him. This plea was outrightly rejected by the court, presided over by Justice Ifia Sewa Asari Botwe, a justice of the, high, of the Court of Appeal sitting as an additional High Court judge. The court ruled, among others, that the Attorney General had led sufficient evidence to establish a case against Atu Fosin and therefore ordered him to open his defense. Atu Fosin subsequently opened his defense and also closed his case. The third accused, Richard Jakpa, also opened his case and was last day, when it was last Thursday being cross-examined when he made a scandalous, malicious, baseless, and spurious allegation that the Attorney General had approached him on several locations to steal his testimony, to skew his testimony to implicate Atu Fosin. Ladies and gentlemen, why would any credible person do such a thing? Indeed, if the Attorney General had any intention of having him skew the evidence in favor of Atu Fosin, it would not just be just for the Attorney General to continue the prosecution of Atu Fosin. But that is what the NDC wants us to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that the NDC ever, ever since the commencement of Atu Fosin's prosecution has threatened rain and storm against government. The Attorney General and any person they can find to cajole the Attorney General from discontinuing the prosecution. Pressure has come from every angle, including former President Mahama, the leadership of the minority in parliament, the clergy, business friends of Atu Fosin, et cetera, et cetera. Indeed, former President Mahama specifically maintained the discontinuance of the ambulance trial as a condition to get, to get members of the minority in parliament to agree to the recent recall in parliament, and has on several other occasions stated it as a condition precedent for the cooperation of the minority in parliament. This pressure stems from some warped and baseless logic of the NDC that the Atu Forcing's prosecution is politically motivated and its leader in parliament should be immune from prosecution, even when the facts indicate conduct resulting in financial loss to the state. As mentioned earlier, investigations commenced as far back as 2017 making it imperative to ask at this stage, why is Atu Fosin the only government official being prosecuted from all other former ministers from whom statements were taken? Your guess should equally be good as mine. Clearly, clearly, the prosecution is based on the various documentation available from the participating agencies in the transaction, and this is evidenced by the court's ruling upholding that the case has been made by the Attorney General that warrants an answer from the defense. It is also worth noting that the prosecution of Kesela Tufosin commenced even, even before he became minority, minority leader, making it worthless and nonsensical, the suggestion that he is being prosecuted because he is a minority leader in parliament. This logic can only come from the NDC. Ladies and gentlemen, if at all, the only prosecution in this instance is the malicious and perennial dislike of the NDC towards the Attorney General since he, assu he assumed office and the several attempts made by the NDC to stultify his work. The records are there clearly to show that right from his appointment as Attorney General, the NDC has spent one of the longest periods in our constitutional veteran system with the hope of, Im of impeaching his appointment. But the Attorney General remained resolute to their administration. You all watched the live telecast of his vetting in Parliament, and you saw what the NDC took him through. He survived the storm, and he's still our competent Attorney General. And that there is a director of Liga uh, for the NPP at the news conference uh, that is partly still underway. I want to bring in uh, my correspondent at that particular press conference, Ryan Papani Ashali, uh, joins us on the line now, Papa. Uh, and they've been making a point about the recording that we heard today 
played by the NDC? Yes, Evan. So the first point is that this particular uh, or narration from the part of the NDC or the minority has all been banded together to create an impression or just to make case for the minority leader. Now, from what we get from this particular press conference is that the tape in itself, uh, they estimate that the tape is more than 20 minutes long. However, only 16 minutes of that has been made public. The question is that why has that, that audio been cut down? Again, they feel that uh, per their estimation, that definitely died them to a tape that has been doctored with an intent, a malicious intent words, to try and make a case to allow the AG to let the um, accused, which is a minority leader, go on this particular case. The Japa, the third accused and an associate of case Latu forcing in this botched ambulance transaction procurement is therefore only a further ploy contrived to curtail the prosecution of Atu forcing and smear the Attorney General's integrity and reputation. But this, I can assure you, will not work. We firmly believe that public officials, regardless of social standing, must be treated equally before the law, and they should be accountable for their use of public resources. Needless to say that the law is no respecter of persons. Ladies and gentlemen, the allegations by Richard Jaffa that the AG has on several occasions made him, met him in private at odd hours and in person on phone to coax him to implicate the accused person is a complete variance with the prevailing facts. In fact, it is laughable. The attempt to selectively, to selectively present facts without the whole is, is telling of the intentions of the, of the third accused person. For the record, it is unacceptable that Johnson Asiedun Ketia will run a commentary over the alleged tip calculated to prevent Ghanaians and discerning people as such from making their own deductions and reasoned judgment. You saw him on radio behaving like a choir master. Again, even though from the skip. From the screenshots displayed, the alleged conversation is supposed to last 20, 26 minutes. The NDC schemed to play only 60 minutes, 16 out of 26. The question is, where is the rest of the tape? Even in respect of what was played, it is apparent that there are repetitions, overlaps, incoherence, voiceover, and distortions, demonstrating that the NDC has spent these past days dis distorting whatever tape they played. It is no wonder that even this afternoon, we are caught in the same trap anyway, even this afternoon, instead of commencing the press conference at two, they had to wait till about three o'clock because they were still doctoring. We haven't doctored. We are presenting to you the facts as they are. Even on that doctored tape, Attorney General never requested to, never requested the witness to falsify, fabricate, or concoct any evidence or testify in the prosecution's favor. You all heard the tape. Where did the Attorney General lure the third accused person to prefer evidence against the first accused? With the load of evidence before the court, how can the Attorney General manipulate the third accused person? Indeed, Papa is still with me. Papa, they also raised the issue about uh, Dr. Kesela Tofosin, who is a minority leader, and that they, what is happening right now with the NDC press conference is part of a grand plot to show them from accountability in this particular trial that is before the court. Yes, Evan. So it, for them, they believe that the evidence that they hold, uh, the audio, the third conversation, traveled beyond, well beyond 20 minutes. But again, they say that the NDC has only been able to produce 60 minutes. They calculated that the tape has been doctored, some portions have been cut out, just to create the impression that the one of the persons who be the minority will, will, will that, or is not supposed to be in court and should be let go at this point in time. Uh, there's more to that, though. 
they come back to some more evidence that they have to the extent that they, they have a recording, they have a video, uh, and evidence to prove that even the, some of the accused people came to the AG with the hopes of trying to convince him to drop the case against some of the accused persons. Are two forces subsequently opened his defense and also closed his case. The third accused, Richard Jackpa, also opened his case and was last day, when it was last Thursday being cross-examined when he made a scandalous, malicious, baseless, and spurious allegation that the Attorney General had approached him on several locations to skew his testimony, to skew his testimony to implicate Atu Fawcett. Ladies and gentlemen, why would any credible person do such a thing? Indeed, if the Attorney General had any intention of having him skew the evidence in favor of Atu Fawcett, it would not just be just for the Attorney General to continue the prosecution of Atu Fawcett. But that is what the NDC wants us to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that the NDC ever ever since the commencement of Atu Fawcett's prosecution has threatened rain and storm against government. The Attorney General and any person they can find to cajole the Attorney General from discontinuing the prosecution. Pressure has come from every angle, including former President Mahama, the leadership of the minority in parliament, the clergy, business friends of Atu Fawcett, etc., etc. Indeed, former President Mahama specifically maintained the discontinuance of the ambulance trial as a condition to get, to get members of the minority in parliament to agree to the recent recall in parliament and has on several other occasions stated it as a condition precedent for the cooperation of the minority in parliament. This pressure stems from some warped and baseless logic of the NDC that the two forces prosecution is politically motivated and this leader in parliament should be immune from prosecution, even when the facts indicate conduct resulting in financial loss to the state. And Papa, the reference to the evidence that the MPP says they have, that they believe will show that a minority leader and others were in the Attorney General's house begging to be left off the hold, did they play the evidence? We've seen the NDC uh, put their evidence out. Did they play that evidence? Did they show that to the media men there? I know, Evans, they actually just made mention of the fact that they have evidence to uh, some of the claims they are also making as a party. However, I'm not trying to mention whether they're going to make that available to anybody in the press call. I'm actually trying to get closer to Frank Davis if I could ask him um, about this particular, whether the MPP is going to make these claims uh, available. Hello, sir. Good evening. I just wanted to find uh, MPP. Well, apologies for the bad connection there to Papani Shali. I will try and get you the director of legal for the MPP for a conversation uh, and, and get a bit more clarity on the evidence that the party says they have on this unfolding uh, saga involving the uh, minority leader currently in this ambulance trial, which has become extremely controversial and explosive on the back of the NDC press conference today where they put out the secret recording. And Sami Jinfi is the National Communications Officer. He's with me in the studio. Sami, the, we just had the MPP press conference and mm -hmm. they are categorical that the conversation that was recorded was 26 minutes. And if this is the WhatsApp message that you yourself put out, indeed it shows that the conversation lasted for 26 uh, minutes. However, what was played today was 16 minutes. They conclude that this is a doctor tape. Okay, so um, we know from the decision of the Supreme Court in the Kennedy Japan versus Anas case that by in law, if you allege that the tape is doctored, the onus is on you to produce the authentic version. So where is the authentic version? Well, the authenticity <laughs> and where is the evidence that the tape has lies been? in 26, 26 no, minutes. No, no, no. Come on, that's like, what the point. That's is. a joke. That, that was in your Even own WhatsApp. If you call me for an hour, okay, I can have a conversation with you for say the first 20 minutes. But if I see from the direction of the conversation that you are up to mischief, I can record from a certain point. <laughs> you see, so the fact that I don't record the entire conversation, but I record portions of the conversation doesn't make the tape doctored 
So if you, if, 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 if you see, look, Mr. Jackpa under oath whilst testifying in court told the court under oath underline that the Attorney General has been calling and meeting him at odd hours in person on him to falsify his evidence so that he can secure a wrongful conviction of Honorable Arthur Forsen. And he told the court that he has evidence. And he dared the Attorney General that if you dare me, I will open the Pandora's box. Now, if David Frank Davis is serious about what he's saying, why didn't the Attorney General object to that evidence? And why didn't he dare Jackpa in the witness box? Because he's the Attorney General. He's a lawyer on record in the case. The Evidence Act allows him to make an objection. He could have even moved an application for the court to expunge that from the records of the court. Dami lost his mojo. He was shivering in his chair. He was silent through the proceedings and couldn't offer any objection. Today, it takes this, these people to hold a press conference to defend an attorney general who could not defend himself when his accuser was sitting before him in a witness box. Are they, are they serious? What do they take us but for? The, but the attorney general was not, it wasn't his turn to cross examine the attorney. No, it's not about, no. You don't wait for your turn. You could have raised an objection. But you could have raised on, an objection. On grounds? That, they, that they, if, if what they claim is true, that the allegation is vexatious and scandalous. And that same should be a spot. He could have even said that the, the evidence has no basis. It has no legs to stand on. It's inadmissible. It's not relevant. Or it is scandalous. And that it should be a sponge. And the rules of evidence require such an objection to be made timelessly. The reason why Dami was shivering in his chair and was, was, was silent throughout the proceedings, couldn't raise any objection, even when the court indicated that that testimony should be captured on record is because he knows that what Jack Powell was saying is the truth. Be because he's a coward, he thinks that he can come into the media to mount a defense he has not been able to mount. It will be, be, you have his day in court no. where he can cross examine Jack Powell. Cross examine who? Cross examine a person <laughs> that he is begging to help him make his case and to skew his testimony in a way on, that on supports a, his on case. They maintain his doctrine. So he gets to put that to him in, in court. That the tape is doctored. And I'm, te and I'm is telling you, the tape is what is, what, so where is the authentic evidence. tape and where is the evidence of the doctrine? You, because if, if they, they say, they are, the, reason, the reason why they say that the tape is doctored, two reasons. They say, number one, the call lasted for 26 minutes, but the tape is 16 minutes, five seconds. And I'm telling you that you can call me for a conversation. We can have the conversation for, say, 10 minutes. If midway into the conversation, I realize that you are misleading me into something, I can start recording at that point. So the conversation could have lasted for 30 minutes, but the recording would be 20 minutes. This That's is common sense. It doesn't make the tape doctored. Is the Number tape, two, is they the say, tape, is the, tape the most ridiculous not? one. Come on. This is an authentic tape. Everything we have put out today, look, I'm a lawyer, and I know the consequence of putting out false information, publi pub publishing false information about somebody. And I know we are dealing with somebody who is the attorney general. Everything we have put out, the WhatsApp, WhatsApp screenshots, the audio recording, which is just one of the many we have, is incontrovertible, it is indisputable, and Godfrey Dami cannot deny it. You see, all throughout this conversation, since um, Jack Pa exploded in court and dropped this bombshell, the AG and the MPP have been peddling lies upon lies. And I am, I am very pained that the media still, still you know, indulges them. Because, number one, when this matter broke on the 23rd of May, the AG issued a statement. You read the statement on this show. Paragraph two of that statement says, Evans, that the Attorney General, neither the Attorney General or his office or his assigns, have ever met any of the accused persons or sought their cooperation in any form. No meeting. Now, these same people turn around and come and tell you that, oh, he met him. But he was ambushed and entrapped by a Supreme Court judge. And you take them serious? These liars, you take them serious? They came and contradicted themselves. The, the dummy that they claim never met Mr. Jackpa. Now they said that oh, he met him, but he ambushed him. Only for us to give you incontrovertible WhatsApp chat evidence that shows that it was in fact the Attorney General who first suggested and chose to meet Jackpa through the Supreme Court judge. The Supreme Court judge knew nothing about it. Jack Pai himself never proposed that. But because that is his modus operandi, 
That is how Dami goes about manipulating the judicial process. That is why his first inclination was to set up that meeting Jakpa requested through a certain Supreme Court judge. But, but, but in the, in the Which therefore means that he lied to you on joy when he said that he was ambushed in the house uh, of a Supreme Court judge well, and that in, he never in met that him. Clip, in that clip you played, um, that suggestion appears was because of the Jakpa's relationship with the Supreme Court judge. Yes. And he's, he's his dread cousin. From from this from the order you played, yes. So this is family, yes. Uh, in other words, let's meet in your, in, in your. But why will you do that? Members' house. Why, why will you essence. do that? In so any... it's not, not necessarily because the Supreme Court judge. It's because Attorney General may have known that Jackba uh, has a a cousin who obviously also is a is is somebody of note in, in society, and that's why the meeting was held. But there. that doesn't Godfrey Dami knows the rules of ethics that governs the work of prosecutors and lawyers. So a criminally accused person who is represented by a lawyer in the case reaches out to you for a meeting. Why will you beat him? If you come to me like that, I will tell you that, hey, don't ever call me. If you want to talk to me, let your lawyer call me. That is what any lawyer worth a sort will do. In any case, the recording we played, which was a recording of a telephone conversation between Mr. Jackpa and Godfrey Dame on the 9th, on the morning of 9th, April 2024, where was the Supreme Court judge in the scheme of affairs? This was a phone conversation. Yes, Dami himself called Jackpa for 26 minutes. So where was that Supreme Court judge in the scheme of affairs? You see, they are looking for scapegoats. They are looking for a diversion. They are looking for somebody to throw under the bus. We are descending and we will not follow that diversionary tactic. You are a public officer, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. You are enjoined to adhere to the rules of ethics governing the legal profession. You know you are not supposed to communicate with a represent party on the blind side of his lawyer. You know that you are not supposed to tell an, a, a witness to deceive a court. That is perjury. That is a crime. That also violates Rule 54 of our rules of ethics. Yet you have done that. And you come and tell us that you are going to do a press conference. And it is this circus, this comedy, this key soap concert party you put up as a press conference. Well, Where is the tape? Godfrey Dami issued a statement and said that he has a video recording of Atto Forsen coming to his house to beg him. In other words, to influence him to drop this matter. Where is that video recording? Well, we, we try to you put see that, that lies have a short lifespan? We, we try to put that question to um, the director of legal for the MPP. He's told uh, our report on the ground. Uh, that uh, he will not be engaging as of now. And so once he will not be engaging as of now. I did a press conference and I am in your studio. I'm not even well, speaking on the phone. Well, that, this guy does a press conference and he doesn't even have the courage well, that, that is, that to is grant what, an interview. That, that is what and we you give told, them airtime. Uh, to uh, oh, my, my report on the ground who tried to get an interview uh, with him on the back of that press conference. But Sammy, they said at the press conference, you have asked for attending you not know, to resign or be fired. The MPP maintains that that will not happen. No, my brother, listen. The MPP must understand something. The issues at stake don't concern the MPP. These are issues that border on the criminal and unprofessional conduct of a public officer, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. He has a spokesperson. And he has been granted interviews on Top Story. Where is he? Where was he today in court? When we say Ubi Awane Master. At the Attorney General, where was he? The Attorney General who from, didn't from want to miss a day of this trial no, but he has because he couldn't General, wait to Minister see. Of Justice. He so where is he? Where is he? Responsibilities and duties. How come that just going after he court? was threatened that if he jokes a Pandora's box will be opened, he has suddenly flee from court. He, he did not he, flee. He from is court. hiding in a from, rat hole. From, from, from we can't hear, find him. Where is he? What, and, and where is his we'll spokesperson? And we'll go to court with the judge. Where is lawyer Chia who issued that statement on his behalf today? No, Dame was not in court. Chia was in court. But where is Godfrey Dame? Why has he flee from the jurisdiction? And he told us why the Attorney General himself was not in town. Why? Why? Stay, stay with me. But, but, but whether he's in court or not, no, that, that hold on. Important. He has a spokesperson. Where is his spokesperson? Well, the Deputy Attorney General himself was speaking today Where? in court. I, and I want to... No, why are they not that. on top? Why are they not on, uh, I mean, join news with hold, hold, hold you. Hold your horses for me a, for a second. Let me bring in a uh, 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 member of our legal affairs desk, uh, Kweku Asante Es, with me. Kweku, this matter was in court today. Mm. And let's start with the question that the NDC is asking. Where is the Attorney General himself? The Attorney General is currently not in the country, and the response that has come in from his deputy, the Deputy Attorney General, um, Alfred Tunyaeboa, is that the Attorney General is currently outside the country. 
he's an unofficial visit. He's doing other state responsibilities. And as on when he's in, he'll make a determination as whether or not he will recuse himself. He also responds to my questions as whether or not an investigation into this allegation by Richard Jakpa is merited. He says it's completely no merited. Listen to Afrit Chueboa at the High Court Complex today. Attention. We are prosecuting our case. They are defending their clients. And that's how the legal system works. So far as we are doing our work in court, we continue to do it and nothing else. So there's no tension. I mean, is, is, AG, is AG around? Is AG intending to take any further steps about the allegations made against him in open court last week? AG is on, a, on, on our official assignment and he'll be back very soon. How many calls that, looking at what is happening, the AG, AG to step up? That's the decision, decision of the AG to make, mm. but I don't see it that way. I don't know the controversy you are talking about. A mere allegation has been made. And so if anybody thinks that he may want a committee to be, to be set up, I disagree with such a person. And I don't see anyone who may want to even think that it's a matter that borders on the integrity of the Attorney General or any other thing. He's very resolute. He's well composed. He's out of jurisdiction. He'll be back to continue his work as an Attorney General. That is the Deputy Attorney General there at Kweku. There was also some heated exchanges today in court between yeah. the trial judge and some members of the NDC in particular. Yes, just as if you asked Wasa Ribochi, because today they could not get into the specifics of this case because of certain interlocutory matters that have been filed. And the judge says she will need some time to write a reasoned opinion on all of that next week. She did not get into the specifics of the matter. But she had a warning to both parties, asking both parties to tone down on the intemperate language that has surrounded the case. Since Jacques' admission under oath last week, Thursday, there have been a lot of conversation around the table. Then... The, 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 the justice, um, Justice Ifiya Sewa Sariboutri, a court of appeal judge sitting with her additional responsibilities as a high court judge, asked Sami Jenfi to stand up. And Sami Jenfi was sitting in the gallery just like all of us. He asked him to stand up. Sami Jenfi obliged and stands up. He asked him to come and stand he, he in was, the dock. He was shown his real size. <laughs> he asked him to come and stand in the dock where the, the cross-examination normally takes place. He asked him then and, and says that, where, what time did he come to court last Thursday? And you recall that Samir Jinfi had done a news conference on that Thursday about Jacques' admission. But then the lawyers all come in and say that, in fact, Samir Jinfi was in court prior to Jakpa making those bombshell allegations in court, even before the judge called lawyers into his chambers. So that case was dealt with. He asked Samir Jinfi to take his seat again. Then, about a minute later after, still... Do you know why that question? The Samir question... Did they provide any context? The context was not provided, but if you see what the judge was leading to... She clearly wanted to make the point that Samir Jinfi had gone out of court and did and done a news conference, and but did not know what had transpired in court, but had done a news conference out of it. But it was established that Samir Jinfi was in court at the time that happened. So he asked Samir Jinfi to sit down. And then a minute later, asked Samir Jinfi to get up again on his feet and says Samir Jinfi had gone into the media and said certain things. And let me quote specifically from what the judge says. The judge says she has heard Samir Jinfi say this. If someone can call the accused person without his lawyer. If the attorney general can call the accused person without his lawyer, then he can call the judge. Then Sabi Jenfi retorts from where he's standing that he did not say that. He did not say then he will call, then he the can judge. call the judge. Explains that and he says, on the. D. He says, if the attorney general can call the accused person without his lawyer, then he can call a judge. They go back and forth on it. The, the judge says, well, that does not make any difference really from the comments that you have made, and Samir Jinfi is still on his feet. At that point, they are literally exchanging words at the bench. The judge keeps saying that, you cannot do that in my court. You, let me, you, let, you have to let me finish. Just like the Chief Justice and, and, and Tadeo Sori in, 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 in the anti-LGBT case. It goes on and on, and then cautions Samir Jinfi to be very cautious about some of the comments that he makes out of court around this case, reiterating that command that when it comes to this case, her mind will not be changed by the commentary outside. But she does not want a situation where after she delivers judgment on this case, people will say that it's because of reason A or reason B. But still at that time, Samir Jinfi is still exchanging words with the judge in, the, in her courtroom. Marietta Brew appeared upon the former attorney general, who was also in court, not as a lawyer on record, not dressed as a lawyer, just dressed as any person, gets up and says... We need to manage this situation well because there are journalists here, there are members of the gallery. You don't have to be playing this out in open court. So she also tries to reason with the judge and say, okay, I'm trying to ask Samir Jinfi to calm down. So if you can also calm down, let's go on and on. 
Then the, the judge retorts that what is wrong is wrong, whether it's coming from the NPP or the NDC, and says that even if the NDC is to win the 2024 election, they can't change all 400 of them who are judges. And so they have to, they have to deal with them, and they have to really try and manage the language around the court. At that point, Marietta Abreu appeared upon, it's not able to convince the judge to, to stop the tirade that she's on. So Marietta appeared upon says, well, this is your court, you have to manage it. Then she sits down. Then it goes back and forth. Tadio, sorry, lawyer for Richard Jakpa comes in, try to calm the tension in, in court. So every now and then he'll get up and try and, and make something. Everybody will laugh so that the tension will be down. And then ultimately the judge says, the case is adjourned to next week, Tuesday. Sami Jemfi, Marietta Bira Piapon, all the other lawyers on record, meet me in my chamber. So Sami Jemfi is taken to the chamber for nearly 30 minutes, half an hour. You're waiting I, for him. We are waiting for him. He comes out. He does not tell us specifically what happened in there, but says that he agrees in principle with the judge that when it comes to the language around this, it should be managed. But as for they in the NDC, they will continue to make their point if they think that something has, has, has not really gone well. So that is the lowdown from the High Court complex today. And, and thankfully, the man himself is sitting here um, and who appears to have toned down a bit from what you're suggesting after the Chambers meeting. Sami, what transpired in there? Oh, you want me to talk to you about what happened in my ladies' chambers? No, that will be unethical. That, that won't happen. I don't want to be guilty of the very things I'm accusing or damning of. So um, I think that but you all with, I can say... But you say agree with her concern. You share her concerns. Oh, to the extent that she wants to safeguard the sanctity of the judicial process and the administration of justice and ensure that the commentary around the case doesn't scandalize the court. We all agree with that in principle. Um, all I want to, I sought to put across was that the information she had was not accurate. And so I needed to correct that. And uh, also to indicate that I had not, you know, set out to scandalize the court in any way. And that what I said... Um, she got wrong, you know, with all due respect. That was what I was, I sought to draw the court's attention to. And like um, um, your brother Kweku said, we will continue to comment on the matter because it's a matter of considerable public interest that involves no less a person than our leader of our parliamentary caucus. We will comment on the matter. Nobody will gag us, but we will be responsible in our comments. We will, be, we, we will do so with circumspection and ensure that we don't cross the line, we don't scandalize the court. That assurance we have given the court. And we, I mean, since this matter started, we've been very, we've restrained ourselves from commenting on the matter. But what is beginning to emerge are very serious issues. And nobody should be allowed to use the court as a shield against criticism. The Attorney General is a public officer paid with our taxes. Use the word, use the word shield there. Yeah. The MPP at the press conference says, that's what you are trying to do now. No. Throwing mud and throwing in the secret recording or to shield the minority leader from accountability from being prosecuted from what the state believes to be a, a crime that has been committed in this case did we financial in today's press state. conference we made four demands did we ask for the discontinuance of the case against that but in, 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 no. in essence in the fact no, what, that's what, what we're do, saying what they're trying to do in Look, the court of public we opinion believe in the is, is is to mar marshal court of public opinion to put pressure on attorney general to back off no you, yes but the attorney general is not the only person who can go fred Dame is not the only person who can work serve as an attorney general is he are the MPP people saying that all the wise men in MPP are dead? All their so-called brilliant lawyers are dead? And if they have an unscrupulous character as an attorney general and he resigns, they can't get somebody to replace him to do this prosecution? So if they think that they have a good case, they should go on and prosecute their case and stop trying to compromise accused persons and witnesses to falsify their testimonies so that they can they can prove their case which was built on straw built on vendetta from the one mm -hmm. if they think they have a case go on and prosecute your, your case ato forcing goes to court every day sometimes he goes to court without anybody there to solidarize with him we are not complaining. We are going through the process. He has opened and closed his case. The second accused has opened his case. He's yet to close his case. We are confident that at the end of the day, justice will be done. We want to give that benefit of, of, of doubt to the judicial process and have confidence in the process. Mm. So we don't have any pro problem if they want to continue the case. We are saying that Godfrey Dame has proven to be unprofessional, unethical, devious, unscrupulous. He has no respect for the rules and the ethics of the legal profession. 
he has engaged in violent violations of many of the rules that governs our work as lawyers and prosecutors. You understand? And he has even engaged in criminal conduct. And we are saying he should be investigated, to he you. should be censured, and all that. So are they saying that lawyer Tunya Yabwa cannot prosecute Atto Forsen? He, Frank Davis, can't he be attorney general to prosecute Atto Forsen since he says Atto Forsen is so guilty? In any case, look, if this man is so guilty, why are you, you recall that one journalist went and sat on one MPP foot soldiers platform that he calls Good Evening Ghana to say that somebody was begging the attorney general to discontinue the case. Look, you listen to the tape. Who was begging who? Sami Jinfi, thank you very no, no, much. Who was begging who? That that there, that there is Sami Jinfi is the national communications, is the national communications officer of the party, and uh, we we tried to reach out and as you heard live there the press conference uh, from our uh, uh, correspondent who was at the press conference, uh, Papa Ni Ashali, uh, the uh, director of legal of the MPP, uh, will not engage uh, at this moment after the press conference. But uh, from what I understand, in court last week. The Minister of Justice told the court that uh, he would not be available uh, and would not be in town uh, this week. And if you know anything about the uh, Court of Appeal judge who is sitting at the High Court on this particular case, she is firm and extremely fair. And many will not uh, doubt at all her uh, capacity to see this through, regardless of that uh, controversy that we've seen around what is happening outside the court. She is going to stick to what the laws say on this particular matter. I watch this unfold very closely uh, on, on this subject. And you want to join us on PM Express because we'll unpack this a bit more and help Ooh. you make sense of it.